Hey everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles and I'm back so that we can finish up this wonderful lunch bag junk journal that we're making. So this is part two. If you didn't see part one about how to construct this journal, then you may want to go back and watch that video first, but then make sure you come back because today we are going to add some fun flips and pockets and tags and different things. So this was the prototype so that you get an idea of the types of things that we could add to our journal. And then this is the one we're working on. So the only thing I did offline was I did go ahead and add knots to my tassel. So it looks good, I think. And then on this back portion, we had added this flap, but I hadn't layered some papers. So I did that off camera. And I do think I definitely want to add a Velcro dot to this, just because I don't think I'm gonna be happy with it flipping open like that. So let's go ahead and do that. And if you guys watch my videos, you know how much I love these Velcro dots. They're the super skinny ones, uh, thin so they don't add a ton of bulk, and I use them a lot. I think I'm gonna add it right here to the tab, and the way I always make sure I get my, mine lined up is I just decide where I want it on um, one side, and then I add the opposite piece of Velcro to it before I then push it down, and then I know that it's lined up, and I don't have to mark it or do anything. Okay, so let's see how that's feeling. Much better when you're holding the journal and it doesn't pop up. And then I think this is one of our little, what is this? I guess, no, that's our tuck spot. Ah, I gotta remember, we're gonna have to put something cute in there. But when we get to the end, it's there. And then this little tab prompts the person to open it up. So I like that a lot. All right, so let me get these out of the way. I think the, the next thing we'll do is decorate the front of our journal. Sometimes I save that for the end. Sometimes it's the first page I decorate. It kind of just depends on the mood I'm in. So we've kind of done quite a bit and have not decorated the front yet. So I'm gonna grab my pile of Edith Holden pages. Uh, and again, if you listened or watched part one, you know, we're using the Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady uh, from 1977. And there are just beautiful images throughout. If I don't find just the right one for the front of our page, we can come back and look at the pictures and find something. But I'm guessing from all of these that I've already pulled out of this copy, there's probably something that'll work. So, Again, there's a lot to choose from. I've already ripped a bunch up. Like this bird right here, cut out would be nice. All oh, those little birds would be too. Um, let's see. If you've never had the chance to work with one of these books or read the book, it's delightful. The paper's nice and thick. Uh, the colors are amazing. I like those birds too. And the uh, the font is just super fun. And I like that birdie. I think I'm just gonna go back to that first one that I saw and not spend. See, like there's just so many options. The bird's nest is really cute. We could put it and put a bird inside of it. <laughs> so I'm gonna set these aside and we're gonna use this little birdie over here. So both of these will have a bird featured on the front. So, I know I want it to be smaller, of course, than that panel. And I'm gonna just lay my paper on my grid so that I know my book page is straight. You know, those are the edges that came out of the book. They're not any torn edges yet. And then I'll use my grid to help me make sure that I tear as straight as I can. Since this is the front of my journal, I wanna be careful. So, there we go, and then I think I'll, I'm going to sacrifice a little bit of the bird's tail because I would like to um, have a little bit of this green here showing, and again, I can go with a square, or 
I can go with a rectangle kind of shape. I'm thinking maybe a square. And I like this to this point. So that would be, let's see, one, two, three and a half. So since I've got this lined up nicely. Let's go one, two, three and a half, which is right here. And I'll hold this still so I don't have to keep re moving it around. And then we did um, one, two, three and a half would be right here. Yeah, that'll look good. And we'll set these, I uh, save all these pieces. I have a big pile, don't worry. And I know I'm gonna want to add some kind of decorative piece like I did here. So we'll, we'll come up with that in just a moment, but let's ink it first. I'm gonna use my walnut stain distress ink, just my brown that I like. If you guys wanna see some of the supplies that I use when I'm crafting and junk journaling, uh, you can visit my Amazon storefront. It's linked for you in the description of the video. And it's an affiliate link, so Amazon will pay me a few pennies if they end up making a purchase, but it's no cost to you. So if that's if you want to see see some things and that's of interest, please feel free to go take a look. Okay. This is the paper that I used for the little strip on the original journal. And I don't mind using it again. I'm just trying to look to see if there's something I like a little bit better. The, the green is really nice and bright in these leaves. I can always use another strip of this. This kind of makes it pop too, I think. Let's do so many choices. It's nice to have choices, isn't it? Let's do a strip of the sunflower just to get a little bit. Again, the green isn't nearly as vibrant, but I'm just going to, I'm going to start maybe from this edge and do, I better use the grid or I'm not going to get this straight. We'll do a half an inch strip and then see if there's a portion in there with the yellow that I like. Thinking right through here. Yeah, just to give it a little bit of a different color. I'm gonna just finger tear. It doesn't need to have, it doesn't always have to be an even tear. And get my strip. All right. So, I love this type of crafting and journaling. These um, these make just great gifts. I, you know, it's it's amazing how much we've only put a few little things in here, but these really open up nice and big. And if you don't mind your journal getting um, a little alligator mouthed, I guess, then you can put all kinds of photos and you can do extra journaling paper, of course, the, like the tags we're making out of the book pages, you can do other pieces of ephemera or mementos. So it's a great kind of memory keeper style um, type journal. So I'm gonna put this here to overlap a little. Eh, I'll just kind of bring it right to the edge. And again, um, I hope that if you decide to make these again, don't don't feel like you have to make it with the these these papers. Make it with whatever style or design you like. These would this would be a fun Valentine for somebody, you know. Use Valentine kind of papers, and then maybe have little um, gifts or little coupons or poems or something in there, you know, for your. Um, loved one I think that would be really fun and again we could add more you know we could put ribbons different things but for now I'm gonna leave it there and then I want to start adding some pockets and I love some of the ones I did here so let's let's look at these and kind of model ours after it this I took one of the floral images and did a very organic kind of pocket so we'll do something sort of like that and then here I just did a fun flip because I wanted to be able to see all of these images and then I glued a scrap piece there to give it some interest so we'll do an organic pocket and some kind of flip so I'm heading back over to my pile. 
and I'm wondering if there's a way that one's not quite right. So we'll keep looking. We'll keep looking and see what we can see. Sometimes they just jump out at me. Like I'm kind of thumbing through and then I'm like, wait, that's it. That's what's going to look great right here. And I'm sure that will happen if I give it some time. You know what? This strip right here, hmm, that's going to be a fun belly band somewhere. And I'm, I'm not quite at the place where I'm going to do a belly band yet, but let's, let's tear it off and save it because I think it's going to be fun. So I did a really skinny one under one of the flips in the prototype. So let's just get these flowers torn off and then we can, I kind of want to, I'm going to go ahead and get some of the, this part off. It's easier when you have a larger piece to tear from than when you get a narrow piece and you're trying to tear. So, and I am aware that was not completely straight, but that's okay. And I'm going to then tear it. I'm going to go ahead right there. There we go. And then we'll decide how much of this or when to use it. But we have it now. And we still have this cute duck. I think that's, a, that's not a duck. Look at it. doesn't have a duck bill. That is a bird of some sort. Okay, this would be kind of a fun organic pocket from this side. And we could still save that bird for something else. So let's do it. It'll be a different side load. It'll come in like that. I don't think I want it to be that... Um, pointy and then I can still later put that bird out and use it for something okay so back to our journal so what I have done is this one is a little different in that the the first spread had this extra flip page so we're actually going to go to here and we're going to put our organic pocket on this spread and we'll do a flip out on this spread and then we will go back to the front and put in an element, not to worry. And I just, not that it matters, but I just opened my journal onto my ink pad. Oh goodness. I, um, when I'm not videoing and I'm crafting, I work in a much larger space and I have things spread out very differently than when I'm trying to keep everything in frame on camera for you guys. And so that's why that happened. But that's okay. Luckily it's brown and it was just the back cover. I can always add a strip with some color to it or even add just more inking or something if I want to. The world won't end. Okay, so now we have our organic pocket that we'll put a tag in. And then this is going to be a flip. And so the fun thing about this is finding, again, some of these pages that have images that you really enjoy and you want to look at. And maybe on both sides and you don't want to lose, lose the image. So I was trying to look for a good example of that. Oh, here's a great example. Okay, Th this isn't to me that interesting, but these birds are, and I love them. So I've got to decide here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tear this one without the quote, and then we can make a tag out of the quote to go in one of the pockets. So it's a Shakespeare quote. It says, when all loud the wind doth blow, and coughing drowns the parson saw, and birds sit brooding in the snow, and Marion's nose looks red and raw. So she must have been in a Shakespeare reading kind of mood. Okay, this is going to turn into our flip. We're going to make some type of tag or something out of this. I think if we tear it off here we can fold the top down give it even though the paper's nice and thick and in really good shape it's old and it doesn't hurt 
to have that little bit of extra thickness if we decide to put a ribbon or a eyelid or something on there later. Okay, so this will end up in a pocket or in one of these pockets some at some point. We're going to set it aside. Okay, so we have all kinds of options of how to put flips onto pages. You need some kind of hinge, and I don't want to lose too much of my bird. So I'm folding that over approximately half an inch. And I could hinge it on this side. So let's fold this one over about a half an inch and we can decide. I kind of want to see the little birdies. Okay. If I want to see the little birdies, maybe we do it this way. Yeah. Okay. This is going to make sense in a second. So I'm using the image to help me decide how I want to fold it. So this is going to get attached to the page by this hinge right here. And then this is going to fold over here and then it's going to open and you're going to see the little family of birds here. So let me get some ink on here and I'll give you an idea of the approximate folds that I did. So this is a strip of paper that is almost seven inches. We'll just call it seven inches. And again, I folded a little more than a half an inch on each end. And then from the left, if you wanted to score it, I scored it at four and one eighth. Again, just do, do your paper the way that it works with whatever image you're using. Um, it's basically, you don't even have to have this hinge here, but we're gonna use it since I folded it. I want it, I'm trying to remember how I had it and it was like this, and I wanna see the ink on the crease lines. Okay, I'm gonna glue it down here. This is gonna fold over. So when you open this page, this is what you're gonna see, and then you're gonna realize, oh wait, I can open it up and look at things. So let's glue it down before we get confused. And I could really bring it over some. It doesn't have to match up with the backing paper. Cuteness, the little birds. And you know what? I think I'm gonna have just a torn edge here instead of that fold. So I'm gonna very carefully hand tear it. I've already creased it. So, and I could put my ruler down if I was worried, but just kind of wanted a rough, a little bit of a rougher torn edge. There we go. Okay, now, and then it goes like this. Fun, right? If this starts bothering us or is flipping up too much, we could Velcro it down. This one, I did the fold underneath, so it's not really, it's popping up a touch, but it's not really the same issue. Here, I really wanna see the bird. So, then there was probably another way to get the birds to the front than what I chose, but it's all right. The other thing is I could put a little, a little circle here and we could tuck this in. Hmm, I haven't done that in a while. Maybe I should show you guys how to do that, why don't we? I'm going to get, let's see, this is a one and quarter inch circle. And I think if I use some of the font from the book, that will be interesting. So that's what we're gonna do. It's gonna punch a circle out. And I think this is sturdy enough. If I wasn't sure, I could back this onto another little piece of paper, but I am going to just attach this circle, putting glue on about a third of the circle to stick it to this part of the paper. Okay, we're gonna let that dry, which is not my strong suit, but then you're gonna see, you can just open that up and look at it. And then so it doesn't flap out, you can just tuck it right back under there. Fun, I love it. 
I love that. And if we want to, we can add pockets or some journaling space or something under here. We'll think about that when we think about the tags. So we're gonna go back to the inside front cover and work our way. Let's just look at some of the other things. Okay, we just did a really simple pocket here using some of the printed paper. So I've got the sunflower here. Maybe we will use a different pattern. How about some of these kind of orange looking bears? This is much wider than what I want. So I'm gonna just tear it. Let's do, let's do like one and three quarter inches deep and see how that works. Yeah, we'll just make a little pocket. It's a very simple rectangle pocket. I didn't even really decorate that one, but we could add something to this pocket if we think it's a little too plain, but we're just gonna add glue to the three sides. There we go. And when I say, you know, we can just glue a little something, something, you know, I can go back to some of these small pieces and like it just says blue and white periwinkle, which there isn't a blue and white periwinkle right here. But if I want to give a little interest to my pocket, I can finger tear the words out like that. These out of our way. Have you guys noticed the glitter? I don't know if you guys can even see it on the video. There's glitter, gold glitter on my um, pad. I was filming a different video um, and spilled glitter. So uh, that's the joy and the pleasure of working with glitter. It has not all come off because there's plenty of kind of semi-sticky stuff <laughs> on my pad. <laughs> Okay, um, and the glitter is for a video that I filmed for Pink Monarch Prints. So if you guys haven't popped over there, I'm a guest designer and I do several videos a month for them. Not, you know, not every day or anything, but anywhere from like three to five a month. And I've been doing that since like June. So if you've missed any of those, pop over there and watch their videos and look, look for the ones. Um, there's also a lovely lady, her name is Bobby and her YouTube channel is Precious Memory Box Junk Journal, I think, or Precious Memory Boxes. But Bobby's also a guest designer for Pink Monarch Print. So she's got a nice channel and does some great videos for them too. So I know I've mentioned it before, but if you haven't had a chance, Go take a look and give us some support over there, too. This is so cute. I love it. All right, we've got a pocket. So now we have a double spread. Let's see what other ideas. I did, this one has a pocket. I did a flip up <clears throat> and another flip up with a pocket underneath, another just little pocket. Just looking at ideas. How about we do, let's again, find something and do a a flip up. Another idea is we could come around the edge this way. This bird is wonderful and I don't really want it to be at the wrong orientation. So wait a minute, we might use it or we may just use a different piece for our flips. I really keep going back to this one. It has these two butterflies and I kind of like them. So that duck fit in there really well. Let's see, let's see what we can come up with. I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna eyeball the width and not worry too much about it. And then see where we wanna do our folds. What's fun about the flips, like I said, is then you could, like I said, you could do a journaling space under there or just add another pocket. Um, and if you don't want it to go over the edge, I did one over the edge flip. This one, I believe, was it this one? Yes, and I tucked it up under here when I was layering. So that one's an over the edge. This one, I just did the hinge inside. So I tend to, um, since we've already kind of made this into a pocket and I've already decorated over here, I think we're gonna make the hinge inside. So let's fold this over and we don't need a hinge that thick so I can trim some of that off. And we're gonna end up using this butterfly for something else 
maybe today, maybe another day. So I just tore that off. And now I'm gonna make our hinge a little more narrow because I don't wanna cover up too much of our words just with that plain paper. There we go. And now it'll have some more of the words. Cute. And then I think we'll put a journaling spot under this one. And then before I decide on this page, we may do a different kind of flip or we may just do a pocket. I wanna look and see what our other pages, what, what our options are, you know, what we're gonna to need to do. Okay, so the glue is gonna go on the back of the hinge and that is less than a quarter of an inch now, but plenty of real estate to hold it in. There we go. And this butterfly, I'm already looking at it and deciding I'm just gonna tear the paper a little bit around it like this. And we are going to patch it on there. And I think it's gonna look fun. Just all kinds of things you can do, just having pretty papers to work with. And I don't like to throw any of them away if I can help it. Again, it is hard to decide which side to use sometimes. Look, I like it. I could have put it down here too, but I like it there. Okay, now I think what's gonna look good is if we do journaling paper here and here. So we have some nice space to write on. I am gonna really quick grab a piece of copy dyed paper, which is in the other side of my craft room. And come back over here with it. And we're gonna just, again, tear it to the correct width by laying it on our journal and just tearing and not worrying that it's not perfect. Not worry, no worries, just happy. Okay, and I could have dug through the book to try to find more pages that don't have any print or type on them. And in fact, I even think I have the title page from the book that we could have used. But I also like adding copy dyed and other things in too. And this one we did a whole little pad of the copy dyed paper. I don't know if I'm gonna do that this time or not. We'll see when we get there. All right, so this piece I'm gonna put here. This piece is a little taller and I'm gonna put it up here. It's also a little bit wider. So I'm gonna take a smidge, just because I didn't tear straight earlier. Just a little smidge so we get to see the uh, words a little bit more. And I'm not doing heavy inking. I'm just getting a little bit of distress ink around the edges. Sometimes I go, I'm he more heavy handed, but most of the time I just, I just do a little. And it makes me happy and it kind of covers up other, other boo-boos, other mistakes. Like with other paper, coffee dyed paper sometimes, look at both sides before you decide to glue because sometimes one side is a little more appealing prettier, has a fun pattern or something, a splash on it. So, and I know I'm covering up a lot of the words here, but I like having the idea of having some more room to write on. Every once in a while, when I am in the middle of filming a video, because it has happened to me, where I've spent, you know, an hour, 45 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever, crafting away, talking, explaining things, using my supplies. <laughs> and I realize that the video is not recording. It doesn't happen that often, but every once in a while I get this feel. Uh, I think we are recording and I like to check. <laughs> oh gosh. It's, um, Again, got a lot going on, and I don't really want to have to redo this one because I didn't check when I had the feeling. Okay, and this is part two. We'd kind of be in a pickle because I would have to start over and have already done a lot of the fun things like the cover and these pockets and flips we've made. 
Okay, we've got a flip with journaling space. I think some words right here. And again, this is where, this is our Shakespeare quote. It's a little big. I was thinking it might make a fun little tuck or something, but it's too big. It's too big for right there. So let's look at a different piece. Berries of Privet and Holly. And I think I, I know where that is. I made a tag out of those. So we may wait. How about we just tear this word, which I cannot say, has something to do with daffodils, which I can say. But we'll just... Again, just to give it a little bit of interest. And sometimes I'll even grab the page numbers, things like that. So we could probably do that on one of our little creations too. They all look super fun. I'm going to bring it down a little. Okay. Okay. All right, so we still have this full page. This seems a little loose. I may have to tighten it up. All right, we have a tuck spot here. We have another, gosh, we have a lot of pages. So let's do, if we've got a flip here, let's do another, some kind of pocket. And I think I even have, but we do a pocket just like that using um, some of the sunflower paper and it's a triangle corner pocket. And that'll be cute. I'm gonna do two sides, leave it open at this top here so that if I need that space, I have it. If I glue it, you can't come over. You definitely could just go to right here. Okay, we may do some more to that later. All right, this would be, I think, a good place to do the little pad of paper. And we can use this paper right here to help us. So let's, and I don't even need the pages to all be the same size. In fact, I kind of like my little scrappy pads when the papers are different sizes. So we'll do those two. And then I'm gonna just kind of tear this one wherever I feel like it. So we've got fun pieces of paper, decide how I like them. And all I do here is I'm gonna use my little stapler. This is my tiny attacher. Ah, it's, and it's just basically a stapler with teeny tiny staples. And then we will find, ooh, remember this? I said it could be a belly band. I'm still thinking it should be a belly band. It's gonna be a belly band on one of these other pages. We just need a strip here. And maybe we should bring the same pattern over. What do y'all think? I wish y'all could answer me. Give me your opinion in real time. Yeah, I'm just gonna hand tear a strip to be the topper to our little pad of paper. You don't have to hand tear like that. You could have cut a strip, torn a straighter strip, but I kind of like that sort of organic look. I'm gonna bring my... Sometimes when I do these, I attach it by the topper, depending on where it then fits on the pad of paper. This one, because my the length of some of these papers, I'm gonna just glue the topper to the front, still get to the pages, and then we're just gonna add glue to this portion of this last page. Just stick it down. And I do think I need to tighten my tie up. I'll do that off camera because I'll have to just cut it off and start over. It just seems I didn't get it quite tight enough and it's a little looser than I like. But that's okay, it happens. This one isn't doing that. You see the difference? It's the pages aren't sliding on me in the same way. All right, I want a little something right here. And again, I think that's where grabbing, maybe um, I can get a page, some of the numbers. Remember, I had some of those lists. 
and I have, um, that's a two, the strips that had some numbers. And that's a three, they're not very big. Let me see, let me see. I won't spend too much time, but, ooh. How about wild birds found in the neighborhood of? I kind of like that. So, since I've got a bird on the front, and there may end up being another bird somewhere else. Okay, because this is so close and I do not want to lose it, I am going to cut that off so that I didn't lose the town of Olton Workshire. You guys might be able to help me um, if some of you are from England and know how to pronounce that. I think this um, that would be helpful. All right. So it's going to be wild birds. Found in the neighborhood of, it's a lot of words. It's not quite fitting the way I wanted it to. Let's see if I can make it fit this way. Get them to be not quite so long. I didn't really want them sideways. I like this orientation. So we'll add a touch of ink and glue these down. How fun, why not? And I could have just, again, done a, a quick number or just a single word, but you know, sometimes you gotta go big. You can tell, or I don't know if you can tell, I can tell, I've got ink all over my finger. Um, the paper where it's torn, you know, picks up the ink very differently than where I cut the paper. And again, I don't know if you guys can tell. And that's one of the reasons I often like to tear paper because I think it grabs the distress ink or at least it does in a very different way. There we go. All right. Please, Paige, don't keep flipping around like that. Um, and again, I'm not going to be super precise about how I lay these down. Like I don't care if they are all to the left the same or completely straight. I just want them to look cute on here. Little teeny Olton. Okay. And you see how I'm using the same supplies, but it, they both just kind of start taking on their own, their, their own little thing, um, which I love. Okay, this is going to definitely be our belly band. I'm gonna do a finger tear there and a finger tear here. And we'll do a belly band and maybe another flip or something. So let me think about that. We'll just glue this one down. And the other one that was kind of a hidden belly band because I had a flip over it, but for now, I'm just gonna glue this one down. And then, let's see. Let's find, I was thinking these daffodils would make a fun pocket. So let's make a pocket out of the daffodils. Or, here, let's get the daffodil words so that we can use them somewhere in a moment. So I like those. Maybe we do another, like another little extra page that flips open. Let's do that. Okay, again, I'm gonna have the hinge here and I generally don't want all of that extra. So I'm gonna tear it off. Lots of different styles for the pages for you guys in this video. I hope um, that maybe there's something you haven't seen before or just seeing it with this type of paper or, or in this type of journal, it gives you some new ideas. If you're newer to junk journaling, I hope, again, you got some, some fun ideas. 
uh, as, as I've been crafting of how you can design pages. And if I hadn't layered all of these on already, like this tab could have tucked up under and that would have been just delightful, right? But again, deciding how you want to craft. Do you want to go ahead and tear all your papers and get them layered? Do you want to do one page at a time and maybe think about, again, your um, elements before you stick it down? Again, so many ways to approach it, and there's really no right or wrong. Um, just whatever makes you happy as you're going. I was thinking this needs something. I'm not quite sure what. And it might just be the something, something that's tucked under there. That might be just enough. I'm going to tear off March and save it. Like I said, I haven't thought through what it's going to be like. But I'm envisioning some kind of, I'm just folding this up. Some kind of calendar or something there. We're just going to tuck that in there for now, and it makes that page look more finished to me. Okay, under here, I do think I want a little bit of journaling space again. I'm trying to peek at these pages one more time. I'm pretty sure I have a piece that's going to have quite a bit of blank space. Here we go. And hopefully they'll be enough. Yep, look. That title page. Now, some people like to keep um, keep the title page for other things. But I'm going to just tear myself. I'm eyeballing this. A square. And I am going to use the journal now to figure out what width I want my square to be. I kind of like that size. It ended up being three and a half by three and three quarters. So a rectangle, not quite a square. Hmm. Do I want it to like not be noticeable that there's a journaling spot under there or do I want it to peek out? I don't know. I think I like not seeing it, so we're going to take off a quarter of an inch. And now, and again, all of this, the measurements aren't really what's important because it's just what my, the size of my flaps and my pages that are helping determine the size of the papers. Then like that little swirl there. Okay, this is going to rest in here nicely and you're not gonna realize it's there. So kind of like a hidden journaling, a little hidden journaling spot. But again, I hope this gave you some thoughts and ideas of how you really can use these types of papers for some really beautiful, beautiful things. I want a little something something here and I think I'm gonna go to these da the daffodil words and what does it say? Daffy Down Dilly is come up to town in her yellow petticoat and her green gown. Well, we have to have that. I cannot let that somehow disappear into accidentally into the garbage. So that is going to go right here. And it's going to add a little bit of bulk to this flap, but I think this flap may end up needing a Velcro dot. But I'll make that decision in a moment. Let's glue this down. <laughs> Very cute. All right, let's just real quick peek. It's looking really good, isn't it? Happiness. I love these types of journals. You know, I think that's okay. Later I may do something, but I'm going to leave it loose for now. Okay, I have, I did make a few tags, not a lot, but a few tags and a few items um, while I was um, off camera. I think this I'm just going to tuck in there as a surprise for somebody to find. So let's see what I made, and then we may have to make a few things, and that's really not something made. So here's a little... 
a little tag. And then I've got some large ones. Here's that holly that I told you about um, that I was really wanting to use. So let's stick it in. There we go. And I made this one that opens up like this where you can see the birds and have the words. So we'll put that in one of the big pockets. And again, just folded it over and made a nice little journaling card. Gotta find where my pockets are. Oh, we'll put this one in this front pocket with our little quote. And I even have another larger one that I made. This one I just folded over, glued it together. We'll put it back here. See how cute it just starts coming together and you can just kind of keep adding more and more. Here's a little little one that I made. Let's see if this will fit right here. Yeah, it will. So it's not very deep. It's just kind of a small tuck. But you know what? That's not going to work because it's going to mess up the tab. So we'll find something. We'll make something to go in there in just a moment. How about this one? There we go, I like that. And then for this little tuck spot, now I like that's cute. We can just put this little, this little card in there that I have. And I haven't turned this into, like I haven't put any ribbon or anything on it, but it is another nice um, larger size that can go in one of the big pockets. I'm trying to see if I think it would fit. I think it's too tall. So we're just gonna tuck it in. That already has a couple of things. Let's put it in this one. This one only has one. And then I want a little something something in here. I think that's okay. And again, all of these pockets can hold a little more in tuck spots, but you know, I'm pretty pleased. Let's make just a little tiny something to go in this pocket. And again, you can make so many pieces of ephemera with this paper, with these books. It's amazing. And um, I love, if you can't tell, working with them. Um, and I'm not quite sure how many I've had through the years of my junk journaling. But um, I was a little surprised that I didn't really have enough to make this. I hadn't, I hadn't bought one in a while. So, and I always keep my eye out for it, for um, these when I'm in any kind of like vintage bookstore, thrift store, anything like that. Because, you know, you never know. One of the ones that I got off of thrift books, I don't know if it's this one or not, it's not. Um, in the corner, you know how a lot of times I'll write like at a thrift store or somewhere, an antique store, how much something is. And it was like a dollar and I did pay more than a dollar. Um so it, sometimes you get lucky and people <laughs> people don't know that there are those of us that covet these that just love these books to craft with and again this is the reproduction and you know, this is the 1977 and there's an eight one much more recent to you that was published that you can find copies of as well um and it still looks vintage-y. It's just, you know, not even from the 70s. I would definitely, I mean, I have no idea, like, if you can even find the the actual edition, um, you know, when it was printed back in 1906. But there we go. We're going to tuck that little birdie in there. And this was um, the little poem or whatever the quote that went with him so I'm going to ink it up and again I could add ribbon or I could add another brad or something but I'm just going to tuck these in here just to be things to explore when someone enjoys hopefully enjoys this journal okay oh. get some of these things out of the way I am just thrilled and see how it ended up nice and chunky like the original um i don't know which one's chunkier i think they're about the same but this is the one we made and again we can tuck more things in we have the extra fun flip pages pockets flip ups oh i didn't put anything in here we'll just grab here we'll just grab this and stick it in 
we don't want a pocket to be empty. That was our journaling space. A little pad of paper, tuck spot. Yep, flip, journal, hidden journaling, belly band. And then I think this is a fun element on the back. And I could put neutral paper here too if somebody wanted to write back there. All right, so much fun. I hope you guys like it. Let me know. Let me know if you're interested in more ideas of how to use um, just plain old lunch bags for your crafting. I appreciate your support. It means a lot to me. Thanks. Y'all have a great day.